the most common that you'll get out of all of the craniosynostosis is the sagittal synostosis, and that's that large suture on the top of the head running from the baby's soft spot to the back of the, of the head. Uh, that has two treatment options, and uh, here at Seattle Children's we like to offer both. This is an example of open cranial remodeling. So this is the one that occurs between four to six months of age, and all of the surgery is completed in the operating room. And as you can see, uh, this is before the surgery from the side view and from the top view, and this is side view and top view immediately after surgery. So in the operating room, the pediatric neurosurgeon has made uh, uh, holes through the skull uh, with, while protecting the brain. And once we have those holes, special cuts can be made through the bone on the side and also right around the back of the head. With those cuts, the, the head goes from a very tight, squished appearance where from the top view, the back is squished and from the side view, the top is squished to something that opens up almost like a flower to create a rounder back and more space um, from side to side. That then lets the brain not only keep this, this normal shape, but let it grow and maintain its normal shape. So this takes roughly around three, four hours. The patient is in the operating room the whole time. After this surgery, the child recovers quite quickly, um, but will be in hospital for somewhere between three to five days. One um, other treatment option that we offer for sagittal synostosis, uh, if it's right for the family, is an endoscopic release and post-operative molding helmet. The endoscopic surgery, uh, it, most of the procedure is done in the operating room, but the child will need to return to the hospital roughly every week for up to three to six months um, for the molding process to take place. The first part is in the operating room. And in that, we take a larger piece of bone away, but we don't reshape the skull. The, the, the bone that's removed is from the soft spot to the back of the head with some releasing uh, darts just on each side of the head. And the second uh, stage of the surgery then takes place. It's not a surgery. It actually occurs out of the operating room and uh, with the child being at home and coming back to clinic where the head is gradually molded with a, a helmet. This would be an example of a molding helmet that a child would wear after um, endoscopic craniectomy or endoscopic release. So this would be most commonly for the sagittal synostosis, um, but can also be for the more rare forms of lambdoid synostosis. Uh, th this is, is made of a special type of light plastic. Um, it has foam on the inside, and this has been designed specifically for one patient, so it's not one size fits all. Roughly around a week to 10 days after the surgery, they'll return for their first helmet visit. The helmet will start to push the back of the head and will start to allow the sides of the head to open up. And that will again gradually force that flower to gently open. Every child is different and so sometimes that change in head shape can happen very rapidly. And it can be as early as three months and one helmet and the molding has been completed. However, some uh, babies require two helmets, and uh, we recommend uh, a family to anticipate requiring up to a year. Um, so it does require trips back to the hospital, and it's roughly around every week. So the open surgery, uh, again, occurs later, between four to six months of age, typically, but all the reshaping takes place in the operating room, whereas the endoscopic, the first part is just making the releases in the bone, and then we reshape it after the surgery with the molding helmet. When we started offering both alternatives, we weren't sure what the proportions would be. What we found, it is roughly 50-50. And sometimes you cannot anticipate what a family chooses. So we really like to empower the family once they have all the information to make the choice that's best for their baby.